Good morning, everybody. It is fantastic to be with you. Now, we would love it if you said good morning back to us. So you've got to say good morning to Billy, to Jane, and to Zap. So you say good morning, Billy, Jane, and Zap. After three, ready? One, two, three. Fantastic. We loved that, didn't we? Brilliant. Now then, uh, we hope that you've had a good week off school. Have you had a good week? Hopefully you have. Have you had a good week, Zap? Okay, he said he's had a very good week. Why is that then, Zap? Oh, he's been doing the Scarecrow Trail. Do you know what? Billy and I did that. We're going to show you a video later, so that'll be a lot of fun. Now, hopefully you've done some fun things over the holidays and had a lot of fun. And uh, do you know what? We're going to be looking at a new word, a new value in our assemblies, and that is compassion. Oh, is that saying, what on earth is compassion? Good question. But you know what? Compassion is all about helping others with needs, all right? But it's about seeing a need with our eyes. Where's your eyes, Billy? Let's have a look. Seeing a need with our eyes and like it can be the needs that others have got, you know, things where they need help or there's a problem and they need us to do something. There's needs, all right? So seeing the need feeling the need in our hearts and then doing something about the need with our hands or however else we can do something to help with the need, all right? That's what, that's what compassion's about, seeing a need, feeling a need and doing something about a need. Now, do you know what? Christians believe that God is a God who is full of compassion. <laughs> yeah, absolutely full full of compassion. He's a God who loves to, um, to just help us and he sees the needs that we're in and he loves to help us and he loves it when we ask and he loves to help us. And uh, do you know what? In the Bible, there's loads and loads of stories about Jesus. Up. Yeah, I know you know that. So do you know what? There's a wonderful story about how Jesus shows a lot of compassion. Would you like me to tell you it? Great, I will. So, there's this story about Jesus and he's been with his disciples who are his friends and they've been doing loads that day, a really busy day, helping people, doing all sorts of stuff, helping people, teaching people. They've been healing people who are ill, loads and loads of stuff and they're really tired. So they get into a boat and they sail across this lake because Jesus says, I think we all need to go and have a rest. Yeah, it was a jolly good idea of Jesus's. So off they went and they went to go and have this rest. And uh, Jesus said, yeah, if we get to the other side of the lake, we can have a really good rest. OK, so off they went. And uh, do you know what? Loads of people found out about where they were going. And they started to run from towns and villages around the other side of the lake because they wanted Jesus and the disciples to help. All right. And so by the time they landed the boat boom, on the beach, on the other side of the lake, there were loads of people, loads of people who needed help. Oh my goodness. Now you could have just thought, oh, we're exhausted, we're tired, we don't want to help. But do you know what? It says in the Bible that Jesus was full of compassion. His heart filled with compassion. This is exactly what it says in the Bible that, of, what, of what happened. It says, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them. In other different versions of the Bible, it says that his heart filled with compassion because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. And then later on in the story, it shows that he did loads of things to help them. He healed them. That's when he did feeding the 5,000 as well. It was probably more than that because there was loads of people who were hungry and so on. And, uh, you know, he didn't want them to have to go back to their villages when they wanted to spend their time with him. And you know what? He saw the need, Jesus, and he felt the need in his heart. And then he did stuff. He taught them and he helped them and he showed them compassion, even when he was very, very tired and his disciples joined in as well. So it's a brilliant story of Jesus showing a lot of compassion. Yeah, Zap said he liked that story. Now, do you know what, Zap? Last week, it was uh, our holiday, wasn't it? You know, in terms of we didn't have to come to school. And we went camping, didn't we, Billy? Billy's very, very tired. Here he is. We went camping and you know what? It was really muddy where we went camping and there was lots of opportunities for us to think about compassion and to think about this assembly because 
the field was so muddy and any car that drove onto the field, you could see with your eyes the need. Cars were getting stuck in the mud and they were spinning, their tires were going zzzz. People were getting splattered with mud and then cars and sort of holiday vans and camper vans were getting stuck. People were like, oh, and they were getting upset. And with our eyes from our tent, we could see the need. Now we had a choice because we could see the need. We had a choice about what we did in our hearts. Did we feel the need and go, do you know what? We could do something here. We could feel this need and think, yeah, we could help. And then we had a choice about what to do with our hands, whether we helped or not with our you know, time and so on. Could we help? And part of me, Zap, a bit embarrassed to say, but actually part of me thought, oh, I'm tired. Oh, this is supposed to be my holiday. Can't I just sit in my tent or sit here looking, you know, at the birds with my binoculars and whatever and not help? <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't have been very good zap. And so, do you know what? I was thinking about this assembly when I was sat there in this muddy field and I saw the need and I thought, don't just see the need, Jane. Feel the need and then do something about the need. And so I said to Andy and our friend Joe, who was with us, I said, come on we got to go and help. And so the first car got stuck with, stuck in the mud and we went and we helped and we pushed them out of the mud and then they got into their camping spot. But you know what? That didn't just happen once or twice or three times or four times or five times. It happened about 10 times in that holiday that we had to go and help. So I had a lot of practice about being compassionate. Yeah, it is quite a good, good example. Yeah, exactly. Now then, there's some really good examples of being compassionate. But you know what? There's been an amazing example all around Wick of compassion in the last week or so. Because someone in the village, a wonderful lady, organised the Scarecrow Trail. Yeah, I said I was going to talk about the Scarecrow Trail. You loved it, didn't you, Billy? And you loved it, Zap. But that came from someone being compassionate. Someone saw a need. And the need was loads of stuff because of coronavirus was being cancelled. Loads of normal autumn stuff like parties and, you know, and bonfire night things and all sorts of other stuff we do at Halloween sort of time, you know, autumn time. It's all being cancelled. And this lady, she said on Facebook to lots of people, I think we should do something. A scarecrow autumn trail. So that the children and the people of Wick have got something fun to do. What an amazing thing. She just saw the need. She felt the need inside her heart. And then she said, let's do something about it. And got loads of people together to do it. (laughs) That is a brilliant example of compassion. You're right. And so the Scarecrow Trail happened. Now, Billy and I, we did it yesterday. So I thought you'd like to see the video of us doing it. All right. So here we go. Good morning everybody! We are really excited, aren't we Billy? Because we are off to do the Scarecrow Trail. We've left it a little bit late, it is now November, so we're hoping that quite a few Scarecrows are still standing. So uh, off we go! Now, hopefully you enjoyed watching Billy and I doing the Scarecrow Trail. And uh, we were wondering, what was your favourite uh, Scarecrow? 
maybe from our video or from when you actually did the trail yourself, if you did it. So uh, have a chat to us next year. What was your favourite uh, scarecrow? And listen out for theirs as well. Go for it. Brilliant. Now it's pretty obvious which one was Billy's favourite, isn't it, Billy? Billy loved the dog scarecrow. He absolutely loved that one, didn't you? It was a favourite of ours. And how about you, Zap? Okay, Zap loved Harry Potter. Yeah, you like that one because he had a cape on, a bit like you, didn't he? Yeah, fantastic. That was brilliant. So a huge thank you to the lady who organised that. A really great example of compassion. Thank you to those people who made Scarecrows as well. Amazing. Brilliant. And thank you to everyone for getting involved and even just enjoying it today on the video as well. Brilliant. Now then, we've had some great examples of compassion this morning, haven't we? We've had the story of Jesus all right, with the boat, on the boat, and getting over the other side and being compassionate, even though he was tired. We've had the story of me on the campsite, uh, being compassionate and thinking about this assembly and thinking, right, come on, Jane, let's be compassionate. So my, my story of being compassionate. And then we've had the story of the scarecrow trail, of a lady organising that and being compassionate. Amazing. Now, I thought we'd end with just thinking about you and me. And ourselves and just having a think how compassionate are you so we're going to pause and there's going to be three pictures that come up on the screen and it's going to give you time to pray if you want to or to just think if you want to about how compassionate are we and if you want to you can ask God to help us so there's going to be uh, three prayers that come up and if you want to you can pray so here's the first picture it's a picture of eyes. Now I want you to think, how good are you at seeing the needs of others? How good are you at seeing the needs of others? Now there's a prayer that's coming along the bottom and if you want to, then say the prayer. God, help me to see the needs of others. And then there's a picture of a heart. And I wonder how good you are at feeling the needs of others in your heart. There's a prayer that's coming up at the bottom. Maybe you want to join in with me as I say it. God, help me feel the needs of others. Okay, then there's a picture of hands coming up on your screen. I wonder how good you are at doing things to help with the needs of others. If you want to join in as I say the prayer at the bottom. God help me to do things that help with the needs of others. Amen. Wonderful. Now, do you know what? I frequently uh, pray prayers like that, saying, God, please help me, because actually I need help with being compassionate, with being kind, with being loving. And every time I pray those prayers, I know that God hears them and that he will help me. He will help me to be compassionate. So that's great. Good. Now, do you know what? We have absolutely loved being with you again this morning, haven't we, Zach? <laughs> Billy, in usual fashion, has gone to sleep. So um, we're going to say goodbye and we look forward to seeing you again. So bye from Zach, bye from Billy and bye from me. Goodbye for now. Bye. Bye.